Good morning, Dragon Nation, and welcome to the University of Dayton here at UD Arena for the 2024 Division II State Semifinal Game. This is the first game of the day. I'm your host, Jeff Gorby. I'm joined by our other two hosts, the Codgers, the younger Codger, Mr. Coach Dave Carroll, and then the older Codger to his right, Mr. Coach Jack Harris. We'll turn it over to Coach Carroll for a little bit. We've got a lot of sponsors to thank. Just bear with us here that has kind of made this trip possible. Uh, we'll talk about the reason why these sponsors were important when he gets done, but I'm going to turn it over to him and let him uh, talk about the sponsors. All right, so I hope I don't forget anybody here, but we're going to. I'm just going to go down a list, and if you all saw my list, you would. It's huge. All right, here we go. Uh, Michelle Rule, City National, Jana Flynn's kindergarten class. We want to thank Wright State uh, for letting us use their practice facility, Marshall University for letting us use their practice facility. Uh, we want to thank Michelle Kern, uh, Fairland Middle School faculty and staff, Fairland High School cheerleaders, uh, Brent Goose, Sandy Galway, Francie Harris, Mike Allen, B&E Menswear, Gary and Helen Riley, uh, Robbie and Archie Alt Papal, Dave and Glammy, Tracy Bunch, Ricky Shifko, Brenda Dill and her family, Camden Corner, Amy Locko, Trish Watts, Jennifer Graham, Tate Tooley, Rebecca Lewis, Clay Wilkes, Aaron Murray, Larissa Irby, uh, Bob Warnock, Emily McMaster, Ryan McLean, Eric Sayers. We also have Hall's Funeral Home, Donna Swiger, Scott and Leslie Thomas Complex 7, JV and Kim Staggs at Giovanni's, Jeff Easton, also Easton and Associates, Mike and Rena Allen, Allison Ferguson, Josh Petrie, Piper Lewis, uh, Lisa Boster, Michael Spence, Amber Pappas, Aaron Atkins at Aaron, Body, Aaron Atkins Body Shop, uh, Ashley Murphy, uh, John King, FHS Band, uh, Thayer, again, Thayer Flynn, Corey McKnight, uh, Al Beagle, uh, Susan Rohrball, Bernie, and Jennifer Short. We've got the Haley Miller family, uh, Lauren Danny Holshue. We got Courtney and Chloe Walters, Tyler Bullington, got to say that right, Becky and Mike Stewart, Ronnie Wooten, uh, Karen Tillis, uh, Jason. And Jana Flynn, Terry Haynes, um, Donna Bias, and Fairland Boys uh, Basketball League. Don't want to forget them. Uh, also, let me go down through here so I can get these others. Uh, Jim Roswell, Andrew Norris, George Thacker, Evan Sayers, Drew, Drew Hustle, Susie Mays, Ronald Willie Mays, John Mays, Bill Elliott, Linda Bird, Mark Curry, Ron Canterbury, Vicki Hall. And if I forgot somebody, I am so sorry, but this list was given to me, so I hope I got them all. And, and why these sponsors are so important although the school does pay quite a bit I, I wrote a check for the hotel rooms they covered all the hotel rooms we've got uh, we, we came up on Wednesday nights so we got of course winter dinner on Wednesday night you got breakfast dinner lunch yesterday you've got breakfast this morning we'll have the girls will have lunch after today we'll have dinner tonight getting ready for the state championship game tomorrow so you have a lot of expenses we have uh, each of the girls got sweatshirts and some different things. So the amount of expenses that are paid now that have to be paid out is crazy. And we all know with the inflation, everything's getting a lot more expensive. In the past, uh, pre-COVID, Ohio High School would comp you so many rooms for the state tournament. Uh, it was usually six rooms for three nights. Everything was comp there. And then the rest of the rooms were at a discounted rate. After COVID here, they're no longer comping you anything. They're no longer giving you that room. They'll give you just a little bit, but it's very minimal that you get. We used to get 25% of the ticket sales. We don't get that anymore. So the, when the boys went, the last time the boys went before COVID, you know, we didn't have to ask for donations because everything was paid for, whether it's to a high high school or ticket sales. Now, basically nothing's paid for up front for us. And so that's a huge bill of about eight to $10,000 that we're putting up up front um, and trying to go. So the high school's not really giving us anything back. But, so that's why we need but those donations. all the people on this list. Oh, yeah, made it possible. Made it possible. Made so it possible. we got to thank those. I mean. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I appreciate every one of those guys. I do thank you so much. Uh, I know from the time we won last Friday night until we left Wednesday, the phone was ringing off the hook, text messages, people wanting to sponsor. And we do appreciate each and every one of them. Again, if we forgot you, we are so sorry. Please let us know, and we'll, we'll try to get you in beforehand. Guys, let's talk about the game at hand here today. We've got a lot of a lot of information on them, uh, a lot of information on our team, some things. And let's just kind of start talking about this matchup. Like I said, it, it's the 11 o'clock game. It's the first game in this arena today. Uh, this is the third year high, high school has had the state championships here in Dayton. This is an actual basketball arena. And when I say that, that's really the only thing they do in this arena. When we're done, when the girls are done in here on Saturday night, the crew will come in, start taking the floor up. 
Uh, Coach Carroll and I, we saw the floor here when we come in. The NCAA floor will go down. They'll have the men's NCAA tournaments in here, The what they call the play-in games. Uh, seed 65 through 68 will be in here playing in to get in the big tournament. As soon as that tournament's over with, they'll pull that floor up, put the boys' floor back down for next weekend. So, again, this is a true basketball arena. Um, hey, do you know that this place holds more than the Convo in does Athens? It, does what it, was yeah. the coaches? 13,000 at the Convo, 13,409 here. That's crazy. It doesn't look bigger than the Convo, but I get, you, you're looking at a lot of seats going up, um, you know, and you got some skybox, what, what we would call suites or skyboxes up here on the top um, on both ends. So, again, beautiful arena. This is the second time I've had the opportunity to be down here with the girls. We were down here with the Boys State Tournament last year. Um, with some friends, we come down and, and experience it. Just a great arena, not a bad seat in the house. Let's kind of start talking about the two schools. Fairland versus Shaker Heights, Laurel. Fairland enrollment 197 plus one is our open enrollment. We have, and how that open enrollment goes, if they enroll to you into your school, but are still living outside the district after eighth grade, they count as a plus one um, enrollment for you. If they enroll after eighth grade and are still outside, then it's a plus seven. Every student Ooh. counts for seven. So Fairland's at 197 plus one. So that makes our enrollment 198, puts us in division two. Not by much, we're at the bottom of that D2 level. And this is the last year we're gonna be in four, four levels. Shaker Heights is 142 plus 49 is their open enrollment number. That's huge. That's huge. So that means they have seven kids on this team that does not live in the Shaker Heights Laurel district that moved in after their first day of their freshman year. Uh, Fairland's coming out of the Southeast East Regional that was played over in Zanesville. Our, our regions go together because we have such fewer schools in that D2. So ours is the Southeast and East come together. Um, in the past, it's been the Southeast East and part of the Central. This year, there was enough schools in both of those. So we're over there. Shaker Heights is coming out of the Northeast. There were four districts in the Northeast come into uh, the regional, and so there are only the Northeast schools, and that's your Cleveland area and that area uh, that's coming in there. Conference, we're in the High Valley Conference. We finished 13 and one, tied with the Portsmouth Trojans, who played Ottawa Glendorf here last night, got beat 47-40. I think. I think it was uh, by the way, I don't know, did you mention their private school? Yes, they are a private school. Or um, public school. Or public school. They're a private school. They're an all-girls school. So um, you have to be a female to go to that to that school. They they are unattached or unaffiliated with the league, so they don't have a league championship uh, to their name. That's going to kind of let you chime in here a little bit about, you know, those enrollment numbers, your regionals, uh, public, private, anything? Well, Coach, you got what? to go watch the regional games. I didn't get to go, but if you want to talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm telling you, we uh, pretty much dominated defensively. Mm -hmm. We uh, held Sheridan in the championship game to 31 points. And they had not given up more than 40 all year long, and we scored 58. Now, the thing that really strikes me is this team you're talking about, uh, Laurel, they have six freshmen, five sophomores, and three juniors not a senior on the squad. And uh, they've, uh, they lost like their first three games of the year. Then they won two and they lost three of the next four. And then in another part of the season, I think they has one or two players out, but they lost three in a row again. But their record is 18 and 10, and I'm sure they play a lot of Maybe Division One school. Well, they do. We had their schedule. Uh, had their schedule here. They play some right. pretty stout teams. They play. Coach. They do. Out of that but Northeast. they're very young, and I'm hoping that inexperience, just like we were very young last year. Right. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, they get that deer in the headlight look. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, the dragons. If the dragons will just be the dragons, we're going to be okay. You know, the one thing that that kind of stands out to me. Um, Laurel was here in 2001, and they have none of those girls still playing. So if you'd have been a senior, if you'd have been a freshman in 2001, you'd have been on this team this year. Uh, the one girl transferred out to Gilmore Academy. So they have zero girls that's played in this arena. 
We have seven that actually got on the floor last year with a lot of playing time. We, we, we played about uh, nine girls here last year. So that experience is huge in this environment. Yes. You know, we're sitting under them right now. The lights are a little bit brighter down here on the floor in mm -hmm. this environment than they are at Fairland High School or, or at Laurel High School. So, you know, that experience is huge in this but game. I'll tell you, the experience just for us coming in this morning and going through and walking down the steps of the arena and coming in, it was pretty awesome, wasn't it, Coach? Yes, it's, uh, it's a beautiful venue. Um, I think, uh, you know, we weren't on this floor last year. Mm -hmm. We were uh, in the Schottenstein Center. But, no, uh, we were here no, last, we were here we last were year. year. We, we were? Yeah, yeah, we were here last year. Hey, the last that's sure. hey, that's why you're the older codger. <laughs> I'm yeah, get, I'm a, you know, I was going to buy you some focus factor, and I forgot. <laughs> we played down here. Last year. Now, we played up the Schottenstein, too, the last time that the girls made back-to-back -back Final Fours. But oh, well. It's a, it's a, it's a great environment. Uh, I had a senior moment. That's Sorry right. about that. That's all right. That's all right. We, uh, the other of us are here to keep you in line, Coach. Well, hey. I'm going to tell you what. We, we got two people we really got to concentrate on. The six... Well, they they list her five eleven, but she's looking not five eleven. She's not five eleven. She's at least man. six one or six two. Uh -huh. I think she's six two. Sonia Hall, she averages a double double, twenty seven points a game and eleven rebounds and four assists. Yeah. And the other one is uh, Tristan Williams. Both of those ladies are sophomores. Tristan averages thirteen points a game and just three rebounds and three assists. And if we can hold them under their average, and we have five girls that, well, we have two at one at 9.9 and one at 9.1. And then the other three, uh, Bree Allen, Kylie Bruce, and uh, Bailey Russell, all averaging double figures. Kylie's at 11 something, Bree is at 14.6. And Bailey is at 17.2. So if we can get our average and hold them to just below their average, it should be, you know, and my my feeling is it's going to be a good ball game or the Dragons are going to wipe them out. Right. You know, it's just going to be one of those two things. Right. I don't think they have the ability to wipe us out, but we have the ability to wipe them out. just like we did Sheridan and um, Uniota. Well, Coach, again, <laughs> I want to mention what you said. We've got seven girls that have experience on this floor. Right. They right. have none. And last year when we got here, we play, I thought we played tentatively. Yes. I mean, I, I really do. I think this year we're more focused. They've been here. They know what to expect. Right. I agree. And uh, Hey, what do you think about that uh, High Valley Conference having two girls teams make the – uh, state final four. That's correct. I know we've had, we've either had one boy or one girl. We've never had two teams from our league represented up here. And that was one of the things we talked about early on. Coach McCann and I talked about early on was a lot of people were counting the OVC out and saying we're a weak league. Well, we got two teams playing in the final four, you know, two different divisions. That, that's huge for our league. And, and it says a lot for the competition. You know, we had South Point. South Point was playing for a district finals. You know, mm -hmm. an opportunity, and it was a close game. So yes. um, it says a lot about our league and the development of, of, of our league over the years. Coach, let's go back to a couple of these. One thing before we go. Everybody at BW3s in Ironton, Ohio. Yes. We want to thank you guys for tuning in and putting us on here. We appreciate you guys streaming us for everybody there. Right. So thank you guys, BW3. Yes. BW3s, we appreciate it. Schmidt Family uh, Restaurants, B-Dubs, and, and Wendy's, they, they definitely take care of the Dragons, and we appreciate you. Let's go back to those players. Uh, Shania, uh, Shania Hall that we talked about from Laurel, sophomore, 1,022 career points, 431 rebounds as a sophomore. Wow. You know, she's averaging 26.4 and 11.2 rebounds. She scored 40-plus points two times this year, 30-plus three times. She's actually averaging a double-double there. Uh, she's in the running for Miss Basketball. Uh, again, this year she was – I believe third in the voting last year uh, of the girl that's going to play in the game after us. Dee Alexander was actually named Miss Basketball for the second year in a row. She's a senior, I believe it is, at Purcell Marion. They'll play in the game right after this. Um, she's ranked, according to ESPN, as the number three player in her class. She's already got a um, couple scholarship offers from Notre Dame and USC. Uh, well, about 30 others, too, right? About 30 others, but those are the two major players right now. 
uh, in that. You know, just a good all-around player. I've watched a lot of film on her. Um, and when she gets going, you know, she's she's fun to watch. Uh, she can play the game, gets up and down the floor and understands both ends. Uh, defensively, they're going to put her on top of that zone for whenever they start playing, get into that zone, whether it's a one three one or a, a oh, one two two. I didn't know they were going to play zone, no, but I hope they do. They play a little, uh, <laughs> they, she's big on top of that zone. Um, now, late now late in the tournament here, they've been going strictly man. We watched a lot of film on her earlier in the year. Uh, Tristan Williams, a 5'8 sophomore. She's our other kid, number 24. Um, 435 points uh, throughout her career. She's averaging 14.5, 4.3 rebounds. These two players alone that we just talked about account for 65% of the offense on Laurel. That's crazy. Right. Now, when Portsmouth beat them earlier in the year, Tristan Williams did not play in that game. She was out sick. So, you know, in the head-to-head -head matchup with both of us, Portsmouth beat them. You know, we split with Portsmouth this year. But, again, the Williams girl did not play during that matchup. Now we shift kind of over to what we have. You know, everybody watching out there in Dragon Nation, they kind of know all of our kids. We want to highlight a few of them. Bree Allen, a six-foot senior, is going to Tiffin University. Right now she is the all-time leading scorer on the girls' side. She has 1,536 points. She's averaging 14.5 points, 7.3 rebounds. She's got 783 rebounds for her career. Coach, how has she impacted? I know you had the opportunity to coach her in middle school. How has she impacted this Dragon program over the last four years? Well, I, I was teasing her the other day. We were talking about, you know, when we had her, Coach McClung and I had her back in middle school, we put her on top of that zone or on top of that press, kind of like what Laurel does with their big players. And, uh, you know, Bree has just developed, you know, since, she, I mean, she was a good, well, she was a really good player in middle school but she has just developed and come through and done so much more i mean you look at the three pointers that that she's hit look at her drive to the baseline she's 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 perfected some moves she's a three level scorer yeah she is. i mean she is and you know i watched her the other day she's played pretty good defense yes she has. i mean and you go you got to have you got to have both sides of the game if you want to be a good player and she deserves uh, that scholarship to Tiffin that she's got. Right. She's earned it. She's worked for it. And she's an all-around good kid. She is. You know, uh, I'm, I'm happy for her. I'm, I'm proud of her. You know, you know, Coach, she was the OVC Player of the Year. Right. She was the District 13 Coaches Division II Player of the Year. Uh, AP Co-Player of the Year. She was AP Clever Player of the Year to the girl, the, uh, the girl that played against the Sheridan. Right. Last week. And she dominated that girl. Yep. You know, um, shut her so, down. Shut her down. So to be able to come out and, and the girl that's the AP thought was as good as you and you come out and dominate right. says a lot um, that's for her. A, Bree has stepped up her game and so has the next girl you want to talk about, Kylie Bruce. Kylie Bruce. Oh, yeah. I mean, you think She's about had how, a oh. great senior season. She has really brought her game to the top and uh, she's going to sign with or she has that's signed with Malone College. <laughs> it's funny, Bree and, and Kylie are going to be playing against each other. I know, it's funny. <laughs> and, and they're going to be playing, Bree's going to be playing with former. Um, yeah, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy Hinkle. Hinkle. Uh, yep. I figure Tommy will probably be in the arena tonight. She was at both um, regional games. Tommy played an instrumental part in getting us here last year. She was a leader. These girls look up to her. So I'm, I'm assuming she's going to be right here behind us in a little bit. Uh, may, have to give her, I may have to give her my press pass and get her down here on the floor with the girls for a little bit. But. Uh, you know, getting to Kylie, she's probably one of the, the fan favorites of the little girls. They love Kylie. She's great with the kids. Great kid. My daughter absolutely idolizes Kylie and, and everything. 847 career points, 648 rebounds. Kylie didn't play a lot as a freshman, but she has been the motor on the floor. When we've needed a big game, we've needed a big stop. Kylie has really been that motor. And I told the crew I was riding down with this morning, with a little different crew than I'm normally with. I'm with I was with my wife and my daughters and, and my sister today. I said, the telltale of this game, if Kylie hits a big shot in the first minute, about mid-third quarter, we'll put it on cruise control. Because we, we've kind of fed off that and, and the player that she has become. Again, she has been named uh, first team district 13 and also the AP district um, first team. Again, phenomenal player, just grit. She, hey, she's played her. She just made 
leaps and bounds over last year. Don't oh, you think? Unbelievable. But here's, a, you know, you talk about her having a good game. Coach Harris and I and Jerry, we talked about on the way up. We felt like defense mm -hmm. is what's going to be important today. And we've, we've, we've played well defense. We've got to keep defense. Addison Godby out of foul. Yeah, yes. we talked about that. She's got the assignment of guarding mm -hmm. uh, Sinai Hall. And uh, she has been susceptible to getting in foul trouble. We have to keep her on the floor. Right. And uh, she, uh, if she'll just, I mean, the, uh, what the coaches call frustration foul or a stupid foul <laughs> of reaching. If she'll not do that, she'll, she'll be okay. Right. Um, uh, we, we, could, we could talk of all of our girls from one through nine but I tried to narrow down three girls. The last one, Bailey Russell, 5'9", sophomore, wearing number um, 32. Great outside shot. Shoots with a lot of confidence, averaging 17.3 yeah, points points. Yeah, but she can take game. it to the basket, oh, too. Oh, she can, too. And, and listen, she, we've seen She's her, a three-level we, We've score. seen a, sky hook, a left-handed sky hook this season from her. We've seen several reverse shots. Uh, we've seen numerous threes from various levels. Uh, her to be able to knock, knock that shot down. She's another named uh, District 13, second team, AP, second team. Bailey is a, a very high motor kid. She's getting up and down. She plays defense well, and she can knock down the three. Uh, again, so we're. Well, I'll tell you what else, place. Coach. You know what she gets when she comes through lunch every day? Oh, uh, two listen, orders of tater tots. Two orders of, she, her favorite food is bread. <laughs> like, honestly, her favorite food yep. is bread. And, and we're that talking girl about eats. Bailey. Yeah, Bailey. Yes. <laughs> she bread. Comes, Bread. I asked her every day. I said, Bailey, why are you getting that chicken sandwich? She goes, just for the bread. Just for the bread. So uh, she great really eats chicken. Uh, but yeah, but she. I don't think she's ate a fruit or vegetable in her entire uh, life. No, no. Uh, you know, and, and rounding out her other two starters, you get, you got Addison Godby. We talked about a long kid who, who's probably, you know, she's going to draw the, the toughest defensive assignment today. Um, just a great kid. Cam Barnett's our junior. Cam is a kid, when she gets rolling, she can fly but out. But you, but you know what? Cam's a great defender, oh, too. Yeah. And that's what I think Cam will probably be guarding the uh, Tristan Williams Probably. today, I Probably. think. I mean, I'm not sure, but that would be my guess. No. Uh, if there, and everybody look on the screen. You, you can see your starters right. we got look out, baby. up there tonight. Right. Because we have six kids oh, yeah. that can drill it from three mm -hmm. and take it to the hole. And uh, actually, coach, I feel like we have seven. We have seven. You know, I have we talk seven. About Issa comes in. Issa plays some huge minutes for us. She's hit some huge shots. Uh, Taking leap is the is the the enforcer, the physical kid coming off the bench. I've seen her come in in, in some situations. Guard a big girl, you know. Even though that girl may be two or three inches taller, Tegan's going to win that battle. She, she is a scrappy, gritty kid. No, no. no she and she came. What was so it was a Portsmouth game? She came and hit a big bucket. Wasn't yeah, it? hit a big oh, bucket. Oh, you should have seen her. At, well, you did. Yeah. Boyd County. <laughs> yeah. Boyd County. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, we're talking about Tegan. Tegan yeah, we're talking yeah. about Tegan. Tegan. Yeah, that was Portsmouth game. Yeah. She, she came in, got a big rebound, and then they hit her off the. Uh, Press offense, and she laid it up and in. Very key moment. And uh, uh, you were talking about Issa, Boy County. Yeah, Issa. Issa had a heck. She, she actually kind of changed that game. In that game, and uh, she played super. Yeah. But uh, I'm telling you, if our girls would just be our girls mm -hmm. and play like, I'm, I'm not talking about they have to play out of this world. They just have to play. They got to play together, the coach. Lady Dragons right. at the play together. End, play as a team. Like against Portsmouth, against Boyd County, against Sheridan, against Uniota, and we'll be fine. They've got, like I say, not a senior on the roster, and uh, this is their first trip in what'd you say since 2005? 2021. 20, oh, 21. This is their first, this is their first trip, but only their second trip overall. This is our fourth. We've been here, you yeah. know, and, and that's one of the things that we talk about a lot. What, four uh, out of the last seven, eight years? It's, uh, seven years, I think seven it is. Years? We, we've talked a lot about this, and, and it's a motto that I use, act like you've been here before. Yep. And, and we tell our kids a lot of times, and I got a little bit of criticism for it earlier in the year, probably shouldn't bring that up, but I talked to C.J. Graham earlier, and I said, C.J., you're a champion. You know, C.J. had a great, he's runner-up state state wrestling meet this past weekend, 126. We've got to get that in there. Will uh, Calico also there. Those guys did great. CJ and I were having a, a conversation about some things. I said, CJ, you're a champion. You always act like a champion, and that's what we expect from you, and act like you've been here before. And that's kind of been my motto uh, throughout, and, and we do a good job at that. Girls, we've been here before. 
Let's go take care of business. Let's do what we do. Do play Fairland basketball. Exactly. You know, and um, Rick McCann, who used to be at the Herald Dispatch, he was the editor at the Herald Dispatch. He was Tim Stevens' boss. And he used to tell me all the time, he said, Fairland will play steady, steady, steady. And then Fairland does what Fairland does. They extend that lead quick, and yep. then they just go plug. So, you know, we're looking for some big things. Let's talk a little bit about you, Coach. I know you talked about their 18 and 10. They're number seven uh, ranked team in D2, 26 in the state of Ohio. So, Max Prep puts all the schools, whether you're D1 or you're D4, biggest school, small school, put them all in. They're the 26th ranked team. Fairland's the number two ranked team in Division II beside, behind Purcell Marion who's going to play the next game against Copley. But they're the number three ranked team overall. So when you start looking at those rankings and, and different things, what John Buchanan has done for this program is, is amazing. Um, he, he's, he's just, it's crazy what all he's done. Some famous alumni, you know, Mm -hmm. We know a lot of kids that have graduated from Fairland, and I tried to keep it to the female side. Uh, Amanda Sinelli, she was an 04 graduate of Shaker Heights Laurel. She played uh, soccer at the University of Notre Dame, went on to a professional soccer career. You know, so they, they've got some history of some good athletes there. As of right now, they got Alex Cade, who's a senior at Yale. So we know she got into Yale. She's highly intelligent yeah, individual. Yeah, very. Um, and, and then their, their last one is Marn Levine. Levine. She's the COO of Meta Platforms. If you don't know what Meta Platforms is, that's the people who control Instagram and Facebook. And they got a few others. They here. got a few you others. You may not have Taylor Theory, Ohio State. Uh -huh. Starner, very good yep. oh, athlete. Yeah. Haley Theory is at Youngstown State. State. I don't I, you know if that's her sister right. or someone who's Somebody. already graduated. Mari Bickley is at Princeton, mm -hmm. and Margaret Jones at Michigan State. So, so they've sent out some. They've sent out some, rolled out some pretty some good high athletes. quality too. athletes yeah. when you're going to those schools. That's right. And, and then you kind of look over on the on the Fairland side. We got so many of them, but we just want to kind of point out a few. We got Emily Chapman. She's an 18 graduate. Yes. She was on the state tournament team uh, before. She's at Wright State as an assistant coach. She's started a, a great coaching career. She was a great player. 2,000 points in college. Uh, Miss Abby Panel, who's a 1992 graduate of Fairland, played basketball at Fairland. Uh, she's a principal at Fairland West. Miss Ronnie Hayes, who'll be down here on the sideline with us tonight, or this afternoon, I guess I should say. She's our superintendent. And then Miss Julie Curry, who's our second, le second leading scorer now in school history for the girls. She is the first female director of Columbus Public Works. So, you know, we've, and we've got a lot of others. Uh, we've got Allie Marshall that went to Cedarville right. and played. Uh, we got Tara Stapleton that went to Michigan and transferred to Marshall. We've got a lot of others. Just want to kind of highlight a few, let them know. Now, the unique flavor today, we're both wearing green and white. They're just a little bit darker. They're the Gators, we're the Dragons. Um, you we're know, we're, we're be, Kelly today. We're Kelly. And they're, Kelly. they're Forrest. We're actually going to be white today. Um, so, well, I was talking about us. Yeah, guys. that's right. You and Kelly. So, um, and coach, look around behind us. We've got, we, we, we got some good Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Up. A lot of people rolling in here. Going to be an exciting day. Big crowd. Let's kind of compare them a little bit offensively. We're averaging 72.5 points per game. They're averaging 58.9. So we're, you know, we're about 15 to 17 points, a little bit better than they are. Defensively, we're only giving up 33. They're giving up 44. So. Um, right now they're announcing, what you can hear probably some announcements, they're announcing the officials that just come out for their pictures. Uh, they bring, what they do is a high high school brings in four officials. Three of them will actually call the game. One of them will be an alternate in case something happens. Um, somebody gets hurt or just something wild and crazy happens, then the, the, the other guy will come on. And he is also grading them. He, he's on the sideline. He's making, tracking every call um, as we go. So, Coach, you will talk a little bit about that offensive stat there, what they're putting up, those sort of things, and we'll talk about coaches. And some well, let's, let's do this, too. Defensively, we've given up 895 points, which is 33.1 points per game. They are giving up 1,251 points, which is 44.7. Now, again, when you look through their schedule, and, I, and we look through it, Coach, they're – they're playing some pretty dang oh, good gosh, teams. I mean, if you go through here and if you look at some of these, Gilmore Academy, Highland, Afrocentric, Harvest Prep, Hathaway Brown, uh, Waynedale, Bolingbrook, Cass Tech out of Detroit. Yeah. They're playing Belleville, Michigan. I mean, Brunswick, 
uh, Jackson. No, it's not Jackson. The word for me. That's right. Jackson, Mas That's Jackson is Maslin. School. They're right. A huge Jackson school. Maslin. Uh, they played at start, and I believe that's an academy, isn't it? Correct, yes. Okay, so that's a private. Archbishop Hoban, mm -hmm. uh, that's a big school. Anthony Wayne, uh, of course, they, we played Portland, Warrensville Heights. Um, you know, they're, school. they're a good school. Uh, Western Reserve Academy, pretty good. Uh, Brush, I believe that's, is it Brush Academy or Brush is that just Academy. Brush High School? I don't know. And, and, and when you look at their 44 point or whatever they were giving up, two games in the sectionals. It, and basically what they do is they match up that top seed against that one seed. They only give up nine points. They only give up 19 total points in the sections. That's yeah. all they gave up. And they scored 180 something. So, you know, that kind of skews your your um, point system a little bit, but still overall I mean, a good team. I mean, but they're playing a lot of private, like Bard Early right. College, Bedford again, Cathedral Prep. How do you say it? Pre Padua Franciscan. I don't know. Lutheran sure. East. I mean, sure. they're playing. They're playing some pretty good. Ones. They're playing some pretty good teams. So. When we compare those stat numbers, um, you know, what what do you I mean? How we compare? I mean, we're just going to see what we get, what we can bring today. It's 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 hard to compare because it's apples and oranges. We don't play a lot of now head to head competition here. Um, like I said, we had both played. Both of us have played Portsmouth. We split with Portsmouth. Uh, Portsmouth beat them. Gilmore Academy, they split with Gilmore Academy. We beat Gilmore Academy uh, up in Berlin Highland. So when you look at head-to-head -head competition, I think we've got to get a little bit of edge there in that. Let's talk about head coaches. We got Coach John Buchanan, 305 wins to 71 losses in 14 seasons. That's an 811 winning percentage. 811. What was your percentage. winning percentage? Do you remember? Uh, I mean, Coach Buchanan's 811. Eight, eight that's, eleven. That's smoking. That's that's better than, um, <laughs> you know. A lot of people want to compare Coach Buchanan when I try to put up records, and they want to compare Coach Buchanan and, and Coach York and Coach Speed. Overall winning percentage, Coach York had a great winning percentage, but Coach Speed and, and Coach Buchanan are both better winning percentages. They reached that 300 plateau in, in in fewer games than what Coach York did. Now we know that that's the standard. Coach York was the standard, and both of these guys have have reached that standard. But now the guy sitting to the right of us is fourth in that line. I know. You know. Well, uh, I was 225 and 165 with boys. But I was 47 and 17 with girls in three years and won three OVC titles. How do you remember those numbers? I can't remember one year. I mean, I went one year I went undefeated, but other than that, I don't remember <laughs> records. I don't know what my record was. <laughs> The, one, yeah. the ones I remember are the ones you don't want to remember. We had a 3 and 18 season with, with Ch it was Chad Bellow's first year, and that's one we don't want to remember, but I remember that 3 and 18 season. So um, their head coach, Tarina Robinson, she's in her third season. She's 41 and 32, 569 winning percentage. She played at Notre Dame College. She graduated there in 16. She come to Laurel from Bryant Stratton College in Ohio is where she come from. So she's kind of got a pretty good toolage uh, of a playing career, uh, different things. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two coaching staffs shake out and, and go head to head with each other. Well, I mean, here's here's what I want to say when we talk about that. Really, 65 percent of their scoring is two kids. Yep. Ours is a more balanced. Yes. So I feel like if we can, we're not going to stop them, but if we can contain them a little bit and we play our game and we're consistent and we play as a team, I really feel like we have a really great chance to win this ball game. Well, there's just one note that I just now noticed in the last three games with uh, Uniodo in the uh, district finals. District finals and gave up 27 points. Then we had West Muskingum, and we gave up 22 points. And then we had Sheridan, and we gave up 31 points. So I feel like if we hold this team to 40 and below, we'll, we'll be in great shape. And I wanna, I wanna say something else to you guys, and you all can kind of chime in on this if you want, but it seems like if you wanna win a state championship, you gotta play man-to-man -man defense. I'm you not saying you can't yeah. win with playing a zone, but I think the majority of the time, if you look at the state championships have been won, they're teams that are going to play you hard-nosed man-to-man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what, even, uh, you know, I watched a couple games yesterday. Teams that are coming out here averaging 75, 80 points a game, scoring in the 40s. This is a different ball game because everybody that gets here is good. Yes. Yeah. You know, you've got to have a little bit of luck, but everybody that gets here is good. Um, and, and they can all play defense. So that's something that we're going to look look to see what, you know, if they come out in that man, how are they going to match us up? Um, you know, can we find the, the in, in Coach Harris' terms, can we find the weak sister and, and go pick on them a little bit? Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting matchup. But, you know, the old analogy is, to win a championship, you got to play defense. Defense that's right. wins championships. And, and, and that's with anything. That's with anything, any sport. That's right. If you don't All play defense. defense sells the tickets. Defense wins that's championships. Right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And, and we saw that last night again. Um, Ottawa Glandorf played some great defense on Portsmouth last night and, and kind of held a couple of their girls in check the first three quarters. Ottawa Glandorf, unfortunately, got, you know, beat Portsmouth. We were all rooting for Portsmouth because, um, you know, they're in our league and, and some different things. The Hughes family are, are, are good friends of mine. I really, really admire and look up to Amy and what she's been able to do. You know, she was at Ironton. She took the team to the state tournament in Ironton. She turned the Rock Hill program around, had them winning out there, got them to the district championship, took, and then went to Chillicothe, turned that program around, and now she's back at Portsmouth doing some great things there. Great basketball mind, great basketball family. Yeah, you know. she played well, at uh, she, UConn she played and at UConn Xavier. Xavier. Yeah, so. And you coached against Mike, her dad, correct? Yes, first game I ever coached. <laughs> Did you it win or a, lose that? It was a scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's just one heck of a, a fine gentleman, good coach, and a good friend. Yeah. Um, Kind of to talk a little bit about, unfortunately, we cannot stream the game today. Uh, Spectrum has rights to the game. So we're not going to be able to do that. But you can uh, download the Spectrum app on your phone, and you can get to it that way. Again, we're not allowed to do that through a high high school rights. Uh, they have all rights to the game, all, to all photos and stuff taken today uh, cannot be distributed through our social media or anything like that. They can only be used for yearbooks and different things. So we have to abide by some very strict rules. So we just want to let you know why we can't stream. They weren't nice enough to let us come in. Uh, and oh, and by the way, Coach, have they not treated us like royalty here? Oh, wow. I yeah. mean, we had internet Amazing. connection problems, and they came in and said, yeah. well, you just do, you know, and Jerry yeah. Bell, let's give him kudos right. over here. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he, he figured things we out. We carried the stuff in, but he set it all up. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and and that's, uh, that's good. Uh, uh, we're just tickled to death that we're able to bring you this much. So right. uh, Jerry's all going you folks down in Ireland at uh, Buffalo we do, we Wild Wings, Enjoy the ball game. That's right. Hey, real quick, can we do some YouTube stats? Do we have time, yeah, Coach? we're going to put some stuff up here. we got just a few minutes. Jerry's going to uh, show how to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you go to Fairland Dragon Network, FDN, and subscribe. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. We're at about 1,889 views or subscribers. We'd like to get to 2,000 by the end of this state tournament. We will also tell you this, Dragons win. We will We'll do a post-game we'll show. We'll do a post-game show. And I'll, I'll put a link out there yeah. on Facebook, and right. uh, you'll get it. You can share it, too. So if we win, we're going to do that. So we're just going to say go ahead and start watching Facebook because we're going to be right back That's here right. after win. Uh, Coach, very quick, uh, since August, I want to share this because Jerry, you know, Jerry tracks all this stuff. I mean, he's good at this. But listen to this. Since August, 72,800 views. Guys, thank you all for tuning thank in. Thank you so much. Since then, 427 new subscribers. That's great. And, that, and like I said, 18,000 hours of watched footage of whatever we've done, you know, Fairland Dragons Network. And like I said, and Coach, let's talk about our, our, our kids couldn't come in here and do all this today. We're, we're lucky we're here. We're like, but yeah. we do have our kids. They are here somewhere. You can't see them. We can't turn the camera around. But by golly, they're up here in the stands. And they did a lot of pre-work oh, for us. All uh, this stuff that uh, you uh, see here papers, we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Braxton Trader, Cade Brewster, um, Ryan Dixon, I, Alec Cyrus, I, all these kids. And I'm sure there's more. Swalski's up there. Swalski's I see up. her. These kids we've all got. did amazing work for us uh, getting it everything in here but we are very limited on who we can bring down on press row um, security is very heavy at these events and they don't want people that shouldn't be on the floor they don't want too many people so those guys did a, a great job of putting stuff together for us 
and, and getting us ready for and today's game. This is a student run thing. Student run, yes, yeah, student run. And we're up for, well, I'll tell you, let's be honest with the folks at home. Guys, these kids and the stuff they've done are up for some awards, and you're gonna, we're going to be asking you to vote because sure. you're going to vote online. Uh, Jerry Bell. I don't know who nominated Jerry Bell, but Jerry Bell's up for an award. He's up for an award. And let me tell you, the stuff this guy's done to teach these kids to get them, yeah. to get them interested in these things and the work they've done, he deserves a little bit of, I mean, he deserves all he the credit. Let's all just credit. be honest. The only thing we do, the only thing we do is just, hey, Jerry, this is what we want to do. You tell us how it, happen, how it can happen. And Jerry's done great for us. Uh, Josh didn't get to come down with me today. He's working. Uh, again, big shout out to Josh. He's helped us out too. Um, I usually say, Josh, you think this can be done? And he'll tell me, yeah. And then I'll run it to Jerry and say, hey, how can we make this happen? So big shout out to them. Big shout out to Dragon Nation showing up today. A lot of green behind us. We had the opportunity to bring our cheerleaders down uh, today to cheer for us. I went to Coach Stitt. Uh, Marine and Coach Abby and I said, hey, we got the opportunity to take our cheerleaders. Would you be willing to come down? Before I got it out of my mouth, both of them were, yes. Well, when do we leave and, and how do we need, what well, do we need to do? Think about this opportunity. I mean, how often do you get to go to a Final Four state tournament? I mean, you go to Kentucky, you play in the Sweet 16. Yeah. Well, here in Ohio, you can, how many more high schools do we have than them? And we're in the top four. Top four, yeah. 800. 800 schools and there's going to be 24, or no, 16 of us, sorry, 16 of us out of 800 make the state tournament. That's right. Here and we they are. they take 16 in every division down there in well, Kentucky. Well, no, they take no, 16 they take of the, everybody. They have 16 regions. Right. So, so to get here is, is just a, a, a phenomenal feat. Um, they used to talk about the untouchables, used to talk about um, you got to have a lot of luck. you got to play well, and you got to have a lot of luck. And we've been very fortunate. We've made four trips with the girls since I've been the athletic director. And we've made one trip with the boys. We've been to the regional finals in football. We've been to the regional finals in baseball. Uh, all of our programs have been, you know, unreal. We've made it individuals in, in golf. We've made individuals in uh, cross country. We've had individuals make it in wrestling. Again, C.J. Graham, state runner up, 126 pound class. Highest placing wrestler in school history. And he's got the most wins of any he's wrestler got the most in school wins. history. He's got the most pins. Very, 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 very decorated wrestler. We're excited for what he can do next year. We're hoping for a state championship that he can improve on that. Will Calico made it. He's in finished in the top 16 in the state in the 190 pound class. Uh, he really had a great learning experience. I know he's going to be back. Hopefully, Quentin Kermeans can get healthy. He was having a great season before he. Uh, Hurt his shoulder again. So we have, we've had some great things the 10 years I've been here as athletic director. Dragon Nation, we appreciate you so much allowing us to bring this show to you. And everybody at home that sent me messages and Coach Harris, but we don't have time because we're gonna have to get off here. Yeah. But shout outs to all you guys that have uh, talked to us. Go find the link. Some of you guys, I, I, Coach Gore, we got on my Facebook. He put the link to the Spectrum app. You can get it. And uh, then you can watch the game on there. And then hopefully, Coach, if we win, we'll we're going right to come back, back and do a post game show. Yeah. So we won't pack anything up. We'll we'll give you some information on how to get tickets tomorrow and all that. I don't know how much of the girls will be able to get because win or lose, you always go to a press conference afterwards. But we'll try to get as many people on here as we can get. We'll get you the information that you're going to need to get tickets for tomorrow uh, and, and, uh, and all that good information. Dragon Nation, I appreciate you so much. Uh, Coach Harris, Coach Carroll, you guys got anything? Go Dragons. Let's go. Yes. Let's take this today. Yes. Let's go, what? Dragons. We'll see you in the winner's circle in about an hour and a half. We're going to be seeing you in the winner's circle. Thanks, Thank everybody, so for much. tuning in. Thank you.